best. You know, we have... Uh, what do you do differently? We were going to de-escalate. They were going to de-escalate. You got to be careful. We are, it's a little tricky playing with them because they say we're going to do it and they don't do it, maybe. But they understood the curse, too. It's a curse. It's uh, China's way behind us, but they'll catch us within five years. So let's imagine, let's, let's say you win in November. What do you do differently, and how do you change this course that it seems we are on for World War III? How do you get us out of Ukraine? How do you stop what's going on in the Middle East? How do you put a stop to this? Well, it's, it's a very... Uh to me, it's an easy question because I think I can do it easily, but it's a complex question in the sense that the times change. Every day changes. Uh, who's winning? Who's not winning? I mean, Russia's a war machine. Whether you like it or not, it just grinds along, grinds along. You speak to people like Viktor Orban, he'll tell you. It's a, just a big, fat war machine, and that's what's happening. You look at what's happened to Ukraine. If I were there, it would have never happened. But what you what could you do now? Think, if you well, get into office right in January, now, what, what right could you now, do now? Right now, uh, you would get both of them. I know both very well. And and again, I, I I cannot. I do not want to tell you. You know, for the purpose of looking smart to five people that you know that say, oh, he was great. Because if I told you exactly what I do, I could I, I could never make the deal. All I can tell you is that I would meet with Putin and I would meet with him and I know exactly what I'd say to each one of them. And I believe that as president-elect, I would get that war stopped and stopped fast. You know, we have tremendous power in the United States if you know how to use the power. I stopped other wars just by the use of tariffs. I got Macron of France. Good guy's like a friend of mine, but he's a wise guy and he's a person that likes France, and he was going to tax our companies. I say, you, and I sent all the smartest guys. I sent Mnuchin. They all failed me. And I said, I'll do it myself. And I called him. I said, Emmanuel, you're taxing American companies. We're not going to allow you to do that. Oh, Donald, I cannot do it. There's nothing I can do. It's already been passed. I said, Emmanuel, if you do that, I'm going to put a 100% tariff on your wines and champagnes that come into the United States. And you're going to regret that you ever did it. He said, Donald, please, that's not fair. Anyway, within about two minutes, he dropped the whole thing. And it was massive amounts of money against American companies. I have to protect American companies. So why doesn't the Biden administration do this? Because they're incompetent. They don't know how to talk. Look, they met in Alaska with uh, the Chinese. And the Chinese lectured them about how badly we treat people. <laughs> right? Okay. I mean, think of it. You remember that? It was like an American. They didn't talk to me that way. They never. They respected me. They respected our country. They don't respect our country. They don't respect Biden. They don't respect her. They're dreaming about her because she's incompetent. She's not a smart person. Look, she can't put two sentences together. She talks. I watched her two nights. I watched her last night, too. It was the same thing. She's not a smart person. These guys are very smart, and they're very streetwise, and they're very tricky and evil and dangerous. And if she becomes the president of the United States, which I can't believe can happen, uh, I don't think this country is going to make it. I, I don't think we'll ever be. I think, I think bad, just really bad things will happen to our country. And you know what? I look at the outside forces, and I say they can all be handled because we have a pot of gold. But we're not going to have that pot of gold to play with anymore. You know, it's a great negotiating thing. I told you, I, I knocked out this massive car company going to take all of our car business from Detroit. I knocked it out just by my rhetoric. Rhetorically, I said, they'll never sell a car in here. I'll put tariffs. I don't care. They're 2,000 percent. They're never going to build that plant. And Is it out. possible to apply that same thing to the electronics that we use? One of the things that yeah. disturbs me greatly is that all of our phones are made overseas. And then some well, of our phones are made in places and the chips. like... Yes, and the chips. And some of our phones are made in places like Foxconn, where they have nets around the building to keep people from jumping off the roof because they have so many suicides. Like, wouldn't it be better to have an American-made iPhone where you know people are paid good wages, they have health yeah. insurance, they're taken care of, they can live a good life, where you're not buying a piece of electronics that's cheaper because someone has to suffer a horrible in a horrible way that's not even legal in the United States. It's not even legal to have them work that way in the United States. So they get these people to build them overseas. You do it, but but let me just say, that chip deal is so bad. 
we put up billions of dollars for rich companies to come and then borrow the money and build chip companies here. And they're not going to give us the good companies anyway. All you had to do is charge them tariffs. If you were to put a tariff on the chips coming in, you would have been able to, just like the auto companies, no different. More sophisticated, but no different. You know, Taiwan, they stole our chip business, okay? They want us to protect, and they want protection. They don't pay us money for the protection, you know? The mob makes you pay money, right? But with these countries that we protect, I got hundreds of billions of dollars from NATO countries that were never paying us. And my biggest fan is Stoltenberg, who just left as the, you know, director general, as the secretary general. Good guy. He said Bush came, he made a speech. Obama came, he made a speech. Trump came, he said, you guys aren't paying, you got to pay. And they said, will you protect us from Russia if we don't? I said, no, you got to pay. If you don't pay, billions of dollars came in to NATO. When I see us paying a lot of money to have people build chips, that's not the way. You didn't have to put up 10 cents. You could have done it with a series of tariffs. In other words, you tariff it so high that they will come and build their chip companies for nothing. In other words, Joe, you put a big tariff on the chips coming in. I say, you don't have to pay the tariff. All you have to do is build your plant in the United States. We didn't have to give them the money to build the plant. Besides that, they're very rich companies, these chip companies. They stole, they stole 95% of our business. It's in Taiwan right now. They do a great job, but that's only because we have stupid politicians. We lost the chip business. And now we think we're going to pay. You can't build it that way. You have to make them spend their money in the United States. And those plants would open up all over. And they'll fund them. We don't have to put up 10 cents. And I am in the process of making a huge speech in about a little while. And you and I, how long have we been talking? A long time. Let's go. Probably like three hours. I got to make a speech. All I, right. I, but we'll do it again. I want to do it again with you. Okay. You are something. They Thank said. I said, how long will this last? Anywhere from... An hour to three or four. How long hours. we do, Jamie? Three hours. Uh, good. Well, we'll do it again. I thought it was great. I think it's. I think it was great. It was a lot of you fun. You are a fascinating guy, and uh, thank you've you. done a great job. Thank I'm you a very big much. Fan, and thank you very much. It's been an honor. And it's been an honor. I'm going to make as well. a great speech, and I'm going to say. Uh, and if I'm a little off tonight, I'm going to blame you. I'm going to say me. I spoke Go to ahead, this guy for me. three hours. Anyway, it's a great honor to be. Thank you, sir. With you. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate All right. it. Bye, everybody. 